Good morning again. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, as I was saying, I, I, I prayed a while back. Now that I'm, I'm preaching. And I said, if Brother Prince could see me now, and he wasn't blessed to see me, but I always remember that prayer. And this morning, even though he's not here, there's mom. So God will answer your prayers yes. as long as you keep faith that he will answer your prayers. It may not be in the time frame that you want it. It may not be how you want it. But when he answers your prayers, you have to be able to recognize it. Amen. Amen. And say thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. But this morning, I want to talk just for a few minutes. The title of my lesson is Why Serving God Does Not Work. Okay. Why Serving God Does Not Work. And when I first thought about that title to myself, I said, that sounds strange. But there are a lot of people that says serving God does not work. Mm. So, I took it upon myself to find out why it doesn't work. Because there are times in my life, there are times in your life, when you say that you are serving God, and you have set out on a goal, serving God. But sometimes it seems that you never reach that goal. So if I'm serving God, how is it that I'm not reaching my goal? Good question. Hence the title. Why serving God does not work. We read in the scripture reading, we read it every Sunday, about the collection, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection of the saints, that I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye, that upon the first day of the week, that every one of you lay by in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. Yes. Now what Paul is trying to do, what he's going around doing, there are some poor Christians in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And Paul is going around to the churches and he's writing to the churches, seeing if they would come together to take up a collection for the poor saints down at Jerusalem. Now, we're going to take our lesson from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Turn there with me if you will. <coughs> Paul writes to the church of Corinth, and he's encouraging the church of Corinth to, you have excelled in a lot of things, but it's one grace that I want you to say, excel in even further. When you get to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, everybody say amen. 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 And what Paul is going to do as he's talking to the Corinthian church, he's going to use the Macedonians as an example. And what we are going to do, we are going to look at them also as our example. Not only in giving, but whatever we put our hand to do for the Lord, we are going to look at them for the example. And then we will understand if we're not following the example that was set by the Macedonians, then we will understand why serving God does not work. Y'all follow? Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 1. Listen to what it says. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia that how in great trial of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record Yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, praying, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering. Now, the Macedonians, they was enduring some great troubles, and they was in poverty themselves. But they heard that there was a need of some Christians that needed a collection down in Jerusalem. 
But what the Macedonians did not do, they did not allow what they were going through. They did not allow the trials and the tribulations that they were facing to neglect what God told them to do. Amen. Even to the point that Paul says in verse 4, praying with us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. So when you read that, it seems as if they wanted to do a work, but Paul was trying to tell them, you're not in the, in the, you're not in the best of, of ways to do it. Right. But what did they do? The Bible said they entreated us. In other words, they begged us. Paul, don't worry about what I'm going through. I know that there is a need, and my, my service to God is to take care of that need. And they beg and they beg. And eventually, they got through. Now, listen to what Paul says. Here's the recipe. Verse 5. And this they did, not as we hoped or not as we expected. But look at what they did first. The first thing they did, they gave themselves to the Lord. Now, if you want to know why God, why serving God does not work, the first question is, have you given yourself or have you devoted yourself to God? Amen. Because there are times when I say that I'm serving God, I give myself to God. Mm -hmm. When I say I have given myself to God, what am I saying? I am saying when you look over in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, yes, sir. what does it say? Wherefore, well, brethren, present your bodies as a what? As a living sacrifice, present. See that word? Meaning, God, I'm dedicating or I'm devoting myself to you. My body, my soul, my mind, my spirit is dedicated to your use and your use only. If I'm not devoted to God, no matter what I put my hand to, it's not going to work. But as long as I'm putting my hand to it, and we've been talking about these evil spirits the last couple of sermons, these spirits will make you think that I'm serving God and I'm devoted to God when in all actuality, you're not. Amen. We have been going through the Old Testament and we've been following the children of Israel all the way out of Egypt. They cried to God for help. God brought them out of Egypt. And as soon as they got out of Egypt and they ran into a little trouble, what did they say? It would have been better if we would have stayed in Egypt. See, because there are times they wanted to serve God. They said they was going to serve God. But when trouble came, was they devoted to God? There's a, there's a term that I like to use as sunshine Christian. Even when I was coming up, I had sunshine friends. And myself at that some at that one point in time, I was a sunshine friend. Right. What do you mean? As long as everything is good. As long as everything is good. That's right. I'm the best friend you can ever you can ever have. That's right. Amen. But you do something that I don't like. You do something that I don't like. You have a disagreement with me. Now a little rain is in the relationship. Now I see a little trouble. Where's the friendship? See, because as long, God, as long as you're making my path smooth, I'm devoted to you. But whenever there comes a little trouble, I got to go back and eat you. We've been reading, we read this morning about no matter what God done for the children of Israel. In the paragraph it said their hearts or their minds was never there. That's yes. right. And what God has to do for all of us when you say that you're dedicated to me, God has to send some trials yes. in your life. Amen. God has to allow things to happen because he's allowing that to happen to let you know where your devotion really lies. Amen. Does it rely, we talked about idols this morning. Does it rely in God or does it rely in the idol? Do you see where I'm pointing to? Yes. 
Because see, when I'm stuck on self, mm -hmm. that's my idol. Amen. Amen. And I can't see what God is doing for me. I prayed before I got here. I said, Lord, we was, it was a house to house, and I, and I told them, and I've told y'all before. I said, Lord, I want to be a better preacher. And I know being at house to house, I can only go so far. So what I need to do, I need to go in with someone that can teach me right. to become a better preacher. Amen. Amen. God is fulfilling that prayer. Yes, sir. Amen. But you know how I will miss it? Is when Brother Greg, one of the brothers, one of the sisters, if they come to me and they say, Brandon, you need to stop doing thus and such, or Brandon, I disagree with thus and such. If I don't understand what I prayed for, I'm going to look at the gift that God has sent me to be a better preacher, Amen. to be a better Christian. I'm going to look at that as conflict yes. rather than looking at that as God loving me. Amen. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. Because see, serving God and being devoted to God, God is devoted to you. God is devoted to me, and he's going to do everything possible, the Bible says over in Hebrew. God chastises yes. those that he loves. If you are without chastisement, the Bible says, then you are bastards. Do you know what that means? It means you are fatherless, and God refuses to allow the people that he loves to go without chastisement. Yeah. But if you want to live a Christian life without chastisement, are you dedicated to God? Amen. So if you are wondering why serving God is not working for you, ask yourself, are you dedicated? Are you dedicated? Not just in the good times. But are you dedicated in the trying times? Because when we look at the church of Macedonia, when Paul was saying they did more than we expected them to do. But the question is, why were they able to do it? Because first, they gave themselves to God. So why serving God isn't working for us? Have you given yourself wholly, not partly? Right. Have you given yourself wholly to God? Yes. I had to put a Blendor actuator on my car. And I have three of them. I have one on the passenger side on the right, easy to get to. I have one on the left side, passenger side, easy to get to. And then I have the third one that's under the driver's side dashboard behind the, ra the radio. So I knew I had to fix it because it controls when it's cold outside, it controls the heat. And if it's not working, it's going, I'm driving, I'm going to work and it's cold outside. And I turn on my heater and it's not working, it's only that, that, it's clicking. So it's only co blowing out cold air. So I said, okay, I know I'm going to have to fix this car. So I put on my first two, which was easy. And I go to the third with the same expectations that I have with the first two. Because they was easy, this also should be easy. Now, watch God. Brandon, everything in your life serving me is not going to be easy. But the reason it's not going to be easy because I want to see how devoted you are to me. So now I'm working on this car. And I'm looking to see how am I going to get up under here. So I have to take the underneath dashboard off. And it's up under the steering wheel. I'm not going to take the steering wheel off. <laughs> so some people say I'm, I'm kind of oversized. So I have to figure out a way to get up under the steering wheel, not only get up under the steering wheel, now I don't have a car shop, I'm in my yard. So I'm having to slide under the steering wheel while the floorboard is scarring up my back. 
but I'm still inching my way because I know that needs to be fixed. Yes, sir. Because if it doesn't need to be, if it doesn't get fixed, it's going to make me sick because it's too much cold air Amen. blowing on me. So after I scoop myself in an uncomfortable position, I have my wrench that I thought I needed, and I go up in it, now I'm scratching the back of my hands, and I get to the actuator, and the screws are about that big. I said, I've done all this work, and I have the wrong tools. Now, I could either give up, or I could dedicate myself Amen. and say to myself, no matter how much it scratches up my back, no matter how many scars it puts on my hand, I have to devote myself to fixing this car for the health of me. Amen. Now, as I'm saying that, you ask yourself, as you're going through life, as you're serving God, when things are coming in your life, you haven't tried, you're having tribulations, and they hurt you, are you willing to stay devoted to God for the betterment of your spiritual life? Amen. Or are you willing to retreat back and say, you know what? I relieve, I relieve my hands of it. And you will watch yourself slowly drift away from God. Amen. And the devil will tell you, and this is what I've done at times. i got to grow. God says, how can you grow? without pain. Amen. See, if everything is pleasurable, there's no teaching. Amen. Jesus said, if you salute those who salute you, what good is it? But when they persecute you and you learn to bless them. When they talk about you, and you can still walk with your head up high. Yes, because you can look back and you can say, God, I know why this is happening. Because it's somewhere you're trying to make me stronger. Amen. And God, yes. I thank you for that. Yes. But when you're not dedicated to God, yes. you will miss it every time. Oh, yes. Good. But the Macedonians, the Bible said the first thing they did, they gave themselves to God. That's number one. So whenever God, whenever serving God does not work, ask yourself, have you followed the first ingredient? And the first ingredient is giving yourself wholly to God. Isn't that, let's get brief. Verse 5. And it says, not as we hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord. What's the next? Here it is. And, see the conjunction? And unto so now now that I'm serving God and I'm giving myself to God I'm ready to serve you God Brandon said God said hold on Brandon because you can't just give yourself wholly to me because see Brandon serving me includes serving people Amen. so when you give yourself to me Brandon have you given yourself also to the people that you're supposed to serve? Amen. So, oh, man. Yep. So, oh, man. But God, I know what I'm doing. I've taught martial arts. I've coached basketball. I've done a lot of teaching. But you know what I had to do? I had to listen to the people that I was teaching yes. in order to be a better teacher. Yes, right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. 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 <laughs> Turn your Bible to 2 Corinthians 5, verses 14 and 15. See, when you are devoted to God, and now I have to devote myself to the people, Listen to what it says. Everybody there? Yes, man. And it says, For the love of Christ constrains us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, 
then we are all dead. And that he died for all, that they which should live, or which live, should not henceforth live who? Unto themselves. unto themselves, but unto him that died for them and rose again. So God, now that I have devoted myself to you, I have to understand I can't live for myself. Amen. Because if I'm living for myself, Serving God will not work. But what Paul says, because when you are devoted, you're going to see a need. Look at Macedonia. They're devoted to God. They have given themselves to God. And they see a need of the Christians down in Jerusalem. Even though they're going through trials, even though they are in heavy poverty, the love of God constrains them. So when I'm saying the love of God constrains me, what does it mean? It means, God, when I see something, when I see a need, when I see that there's trials in my life, when I see that there's tribulations, my love for you will not allow me to turn around. My love for you is going to allow me to keep going. Well, I told you we was going through the Old Testament. When, when they prayed to come out of Egypt, God brought them out of Egypt, and they left. Pharaoh said, you know what, you leave, all of y'all, get out of here. And they was leaving. But Pharaoh said, hold up, we can't let them go. And, and Pharaoh and his army, he gets behind them. Watch God. And they're running, and they're leaving, and they look up ahead, and there's a red sea that they see that it's impossible for us to cross. Yeah, yeah. So rather than being devoted to God and knowing that with God all things are possible, mm -hmm. they start complaining because now I'm looking behind me rather than looking ahead. Amen. They stop. They talk to Moses. Moses says, stand still. And you will see the power of God. These Egyptians that you see today, they'll be gone tomorrow. But watch what God said. See, Moses said, people will tell you, stand still, wait on God. Watch what God said. God said, you keep moving. Because, see, when you're dedicated to God, you don't have time to stand still. Because the devil, the Bible says over in 1 Peter, is as a roaring lion seeking so while I'm standing still, while I'm in my house of retreat because I don't want any confrontation or because I don't like how God is doing things, while I'm sitting back in my house, you know who's waiting on me at home? Say, He's waiting. He's waiting. And when we get home, <laughs> we, we going back to one of our previous lessons. There was a man that had one spirit in his house. He cleaned out that one spirit, right? Now, he's cleaned out that one spirit. Now, I've done. I've served God. I've gotten rid of the spirit, bro. I'm good. So let me go about my everyday life. But you know what's wrong with his life? He's not dedicated to God. Because if he was dedicated to God, he would have understood. I've gotten rid of one demon. But I know some others are coming. Yeah, right. But what he did, he ran back home and he got comfortable. Yeah. And the Bible says that that one demon came back with seven others. Yeah. So now the Bible says the, the, the last state of man is worse than the first. You know why? Because God said, Brandon, when you're going through problems on the initial onset, you stay dedicated to me. And all these other demons won't show up. But when you go through issues and when you're going through life and you run from me. And all of these other devils come into your life. You are in a worse state than what you were in the beginning. So now, God, so I have to give myself people but they have all different types of attitudes 
They have all different types of attitudes, mm -hmm. personalities. Mm -hmm. Some of them strong-willed. Some passive. Some likes no confrontation. Some is going to stand no matter what. So God, you are telling me that I have to serve them if you're dedicated to me. Because if you're not dedicated to me, 1 John chapter 3, whosoever has this world's good, we know it, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion. How dwelleth? Do you hear what he's asking? How can you say you have the love of God in your heart right. when you're not willing to serve the people? Amen. Right. How can you say it? But the devil will convince you that you do. Right. The devil will convince you that I'm serving God because, you know, I've told God I know what I'm doing. This is me. I'm teaching these kids. They know nothing about basketball. But you know what I have to learn? I'm the coach. I have more knowledge, but they are bringing something to the table. But if in my mindset, I'm the coach, they listen to me and only me. I'm going to, to miss the blessing that they bring to my team. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Coaches and I have had conversations. We was in the middle of a practice. And some of the kids came up. They said, Coach, we need to get this particular player because he's a good player. I'm the coach. You kids, y'all don't tell us what to do. We tell y'all what to do. You know how bad that hurt me? But I talked to the coach. I said, Coach, I said, we can't do that. I said, because these players have better relationships with other players than we do. I said, but in order to make this team work, you're talking about continuity. You're talking about team chemistry. You can't have team chemistry when there's a dictatorship. Amen. See, the church is not a dictatorship, but the church requires each and every one of us. It requires when I'm out of line, it requires for you all to put me back in line. Amen. It requires when I'm weak in an area, it requires for you all to see that area and give me some encouragement to what I can do to be better in that area. Amen. But if I'm not serving God, when you encourage me, when you come to put me back online, if I'm not dedicated to God, if I don't know my purpose, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stay away from the one that's trying to help. Amen. And I'm going to blame people rather than saying, thank you, God. Amen. Because I'm not devoted to God and I'm not devoted to the people. Now, back to my car. Now I'm through resting. <laughs> because on the initial onset, it was hurt. And in my mind, I wanted to quit. But I knew I couldn't. And so I went to YouTube, which is one of the best things they've done. Yeah. And I watched how other people did things. And this young guy says, get you a smaller socket that'll reach up in it. I said, I don't have one. Well, go to the store and buy you one. So I went to the store and I bought one. And I get back and I'm faced with that same obstacle. Okay, my back is already whipped up. But I still have to slide under this steering wheel. And I slide under the steering wheel. And I'm hitting those same whips, even making some new ones. And I reach my hand back up in the hole. Now it's digging into the back of my hand. And now I'm getting upset. But you know what I say? You're not going to beat me. That's right. So I dedicate myself to getting that piece out. And as I'm turning, it's cutting my hand. But my dedication didn't allow me to focus on the pain that I was going through. My dedication allowed me to see the goal that I was trying to reach. Amen. When I'm dedicated to God, when I'm dedicated to the people, 
Dedication does not allow me to see the pain that I'm dealing with. Amen. My dedication and devoted to the devotion to God allows me to see the end goal. Amen. 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 When, when Peter stepped off the ship, say ship boat, and everything was good at the onset. Then the Bible says that the wind became boisterous. And now, Peter takes his focus off of God, and he begins to sink. He screams out, Lord, save me. <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with Peter, because see, he left the boat when God called him. See, the issue would have been when he said, Lord, if that's you, bid me come. Then when God, when Jesus says to him, come on. If Peter would have said, I'm good. <laughs> then that would have been a problem. But Peter got off of the boat and he began to walk. God says, but I want you to understand. I want to see where you are, Peter. I want to see where you are. And as he's walking, life starts getting a little hard for him. Yes. And he's focused on everything around him. And it's natural. But God wants to know, when you are sinking, who are you reaching for? Amen. Because see, whoever you reach for, that's who your devotion is to. And a lot of times, the reason God can't save me and the reason God serving God is not good for me because I'm reaching to the wrong people. Yes. Yes. The Macedonians, they gave themselves to God yes. and they gave themselves to the people. To the people. We go to a life now to go out and eat. When we have to. You have a server come to your table. Do you treat that server nice every time you go? Do you talk to him nice every time you go? Do you treat him, do you tip him heavily or her heavily every time you go? Or do you tip him according to the service? Now some would, well it don't matter. I'm going to tip them accordingly. I'm going to tip them however I see fit. And that is a good thing to do. But you know what those servers have to understand? I used to be one. How you treat your customers depends on your tip. Yeah. <laughs> Watch Satan. Satan says, but you tip them well because they, don't, they, do, they do not get paid a lot anyway on the onset. And that seems plausible. But you know what Satan will do? If Brother Michael comes to the restaurant and I'm his server and I know I'm supposed to give myself to him because he's in my area, I'm supposed to wait on him, but I see his drink run out and I'm running by him, filling up everyone else's drink and I look over and I see, you good? <laughs> and I fill up everybody else's drink. You good? And I feel I'm doing everything for everybody else. But out of the goodness of Brother Michael's heart, he still tipped me a 20. You know what that just told me? If God was that kind of tipper, you know what that tells us? I can shim on my job and still get the full benefit. <coughs> Do y'all follow what I'm saying? Yes. Because see, serving is a very, turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20. We're going to start at verse 25. James and John came to Jesus one day. And Salome, their mother. They wanted to have the left and the right seat in his kingdom. And Jesus says, do you think that you can be baptized with the baptism that I'm going to be baptized with? And of course they said yes. And Jesus said, indeed you will. He said, but to give the right and the left, 
That's not, that's not my call. Verse 25. Are you there? Yeah. Listen to what it says. But Jesus called them and unto them, and he said, You know the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that great that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister or servant. Yes, sir. And whosoever be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to do what? Minister. But to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Do you see the type of servant that Jesus was? Can you see the type of servants that's a, that the Macedonians were? Because they understood Christ has left me an example. He has left me an example of how to be devoted to God. He has left me an example how to be a servant to other people. When you go to Philippians chapter 2, we read it. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself no reputation and became in the form of a man. Why did he do it? Because he knew being a servant, I can't hold on to myself. Being a servant for God, I have to be willing to allow myself to be used. I have become all things, Paul said, to all men. Amen. To the weak, I became weak. To the Jew, I became a Jew. To the Greek, I became a Greek. I became all things to all men in the hope that I might what? Amen. That I might save some. So if you're not dedicated to people, how can you save? I'm serving God. So we look at the Macedonians. They were dedicated to God. And they were dedicated to the people. And they were dedicated to the work. What's the work? We just talked about it. The work of servanthood. That's a work that you're going to be talked about. That's a work that you're going to be lied on. That's a work that you're going to be unappreciated. Yes, sir. But all of that entails servanthood. Yes. But the question is, when you're serving, who are you serving? Mm -hmm. Because if you're dedicated to God, you know that servanthood entails all of these things as Christ has suffered in the flesh. Yes. Arm yourselves. Likewise. So if I'm following Christ's example as he's walking through the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, God, he said, you know what? Y'all sit here. I got to go pray about this. He said, I have to go pray about this. He said, because what I'm going through, all at this particular time, the weight of what Christ is about to do for us because of servanthood is weighing on him. Yes. To the point that he says, it's about to kill me. Luke describes it as drops of blood That's right. dripping from his head. Yes. But he never turned away from servanthood. No, Even when he prayed to God, he said, Lord, remove this cup from me. Yes. Nevertheless, listen at the prayer. Yes. Not my will, but thy will be done. What's the will, Jesus? Servanthood. God, you sent me here. I have to be a servant to the people. I have to give them what they need, even though they don't think they need it. I have to love them when they don't even understand what I'm doing. I have to give my life for people that I have done so many miracles for. I have healed the sick. I have raised the dead. I have fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. And yet I still have to serve these no good people. God said, if you're dedicated to me, if you're dedicated to me, you're not looking to go back to Egypt. You're looking to go to heaven. But if you're not dedicated to God and you're not dedicated to the people and you're not dedicated to the work of servanthood, Egypt is your destiny. 
Egypt is your safety net. But God says the only safety net you need, I'm your safety net. Amen. Thank you. But what are you going to do? And he's praying. And the Bible says that God sent an angel not to remove what he had to go through, but to strengthen him to keep going. Because, see, before the strength came, he went and looked at his disciples. He said, you couldn't wait? For just one hour. And he's upset with this. Because that's the human emotion. But what he's trying to show. The Bible says he prayed three times. The same prayer. At the end of every prayer. God even though I don't want to do this. Let your will be done. And the Bible says. After the third prayer. He sent an angel to strengthen him. And then he went back and he saw his disciples sleep. He said sleep on him. Sleep on. Sleep on. Because I know that there's a God. And I'm devoted to his work. So I don't need you to stop that garrison of people coming up the hill. I don't need you when they, when they came up the hill and they looking at everybody. Jesus stepped out. I, I'm the one you're looking for. I'm the one you're looking for. Because I'm devoted to God. And my devotion to God and my devotion to the people and my devotion to the work will not allow me to step back. It won't allow me to watch other people to do, to do the things that God called me to do. Right. Now, okay, God, so I'm going to do your will. I'm going to do your will. Is it going to be peaceful? Jesus just made up his mind in the garden. But once he left the garden, they put a crown of thorns on his head. That wasn't good enough. They took a stick and they hit it. And God just strengthened him. So if God strengthened him, what did God strengthen him for? What's coming next? That's right. So as he's walking from judgment hall, leading up to judgment hall, as they're hitting him, God had given him the strength because he was dedicated to God. God has given him the strength to endure it. And then they spit on him. He says nothing because he's dedicated to God. He's dedicated to the people. And he's dedicated to being a servant. They ridicule him. He doesn't say anything. Because he's dedicated to the work of servitude. They take him to Pilate. And the Bible says he doesn't say a mumbling word. It doesn't say he didn't say anything. He didn't say, um, in other words, he did not complain about what he is going through. Because now God has strengthened him. He know God, this is for a reason. God, the reason I'm going through this is to save someone's soul. And they take him. And they beat mine and your servant that done this by his own free will. When you look at the church of Macedonia, they weren't forced to do this. They did this. They chose servanthood of their own free will because they saw the example or they heard of the example of what the servant of Christ Jesus did. And now they take him and the Jews are upset with him. And they want to torture him. So they take a cat of nine tails mixed with bones and ball bearings. And they exposed his naked skin. And they take that cat of nine tails, your servant and my servant. And they hit him 
and it sticks in his back. They don't say, let me stop because it may hurt him. They take that whip and they pull it. And when they pull it, it rips chunks of flesh from him. He never abandons his post. They beat him to the point to where when they put that cross on his back and he was not deserving of that. You know who was? We were. But because he was dedicated to God and he dedicated himself to people and he understood what servanthood was he understood, God, I have to be a sacrifice for some ignorant people that don't know the state that they're in. And he begins to fall under the weight of the cross. They look to, in the crowd and they tell Simon, a serenity, hey, go ahead. And he helped him carry his cross to Gagapa's hill. They then proceed, because the beating wasn't good enough, they lay down this cross, your servant and mine. They outstretch his hands. They put his feet together. They take stakes and they drive it in his hand. And he never once did anything to save himself because he understood how devoted he was to servanthood. He understood if I save myself, how many people are going to die? After they met him, one of the most humiliating deaths by the Romans it could be, they put him in the middle of two thieves. And the thieves are ridiculing him. And the people are walking by. Yeah. If you be the son of God, come down and save yourself. See, but servanthood, when you're devoted to God, servanthood won't allow you to look at yourself. Servanthood allows you to, if I save myself, you're going to die. You're going to die. So what do you do? What does he do? He takes it. They come to, they fill a, a gall with vinegar. They want to give it to him. He refuses it. And I wondered, I said, well, God, why is it if this could ease the pain, why did he refuse it? Because, Brandon, I want you to know, serving God, you're going to have to suffer. You are going to have to suffer. Yes. When I went down in that grave, that old man, that is a daily putting off. Yes. That is a daily sacrifice. A sacrifice hurts. Yes, sir. It hurts. And we are going to have to do it if we plan on making heaven our home. Amen. Because Jesus has given us an example we see what the Macedonian church did. They gave themselves to God. They gave themselves to the people. And they would not allow anyone, even though Paul was an apostle, they was not going to allow Paul to stop them from doing what God told them to do. Yes. They begged, let us help you. You're not, in the, you're not in a good place. Don't worry about that, Paul. Let us help you. To the point that Paul said, we saw that and we even told Titus, hey, you continue to do what you're doing. This lesson, coming down to the end, is yours. Turn with, with me in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, when you're there, say I'm there. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Couple more there, and we'll read it. Proverbs chapter 3, 
verses 5 and 6. Amen. And it reads, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Whatever it is that we are going to do, whatever it is that we are going through, do not think you understand what you're going through, because you don't. But you can, excuse me, you consult with God, and God will show you. God will guide you in everything that you're supposed to do. Amen. But the question is, are you devoted? Amen. Are you devoted? And if you're not devoted, now you understand why serving God does not work. There are five things that you must do to become a member of the one and only church that you can find in New Testament scripture. First, you must hear the gospel. Second, you must believe what you have heard. Third, repent of your sin. Fourth, confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Fifth, be buried in the water of grave baptism. If there is anyone within the sound of my voice that would like to do so, you can do so. I'll be saying the song of invitation. Don't you want to go?